The first thing to make sure of before you begin any sort of shadow mapping or shading is to make sure that you, the depth of your cube, the cube being an equal sided box, is not so long that it becomes a rectangle. It has to look like a square. So just as hard as we work to make the measurement of the width equal to the measurement of the height of our elevation, of our beginning to our one point perspective, you have to work just as hard to make sure that this is not any longer than this appears to be right here. So we know that in actuality it is that wide, it is that deep, but it isn't. And when it's foreshortened. This is called foreshortening. If I were to measure against this, it's actually less than half. So check your work, make sure that that isn't going to be too deep. Now remember that you choose a point that represents the light being in front of the box and over to one side. And the, the light, we can't see the actual light. We just see where the light hits the floor. We put a mark for that. And with your set square, you line up the corner, the front corner of the box, and make a line. Now, we looked at a floor plan view of this to see that the light is really in front. So, if this is my box, and I'm looking at it as a floor plan view, and my light is sitting out here, then when I draw my light, project my light through the four corners, it tells me right away that the light isn't being interrupted until we get to this corner, that this, in fact, is all lit up. The light is freely hitting it. But here and here, the box is beginning to block the light. So we have to begin our cast shadow here. And because the box, the shadow is just a replica of the box, a re repeat of the box, you draw the shadow the same way. So if that side of the box looks like that, then this side of the shadow looks the same way. If this side of the box, the back of the box, looks like that, then the back of our shadow, when it meets this next projection, should also look the same way. And cross-hatching is an architectural device. It gives your work a little bit of a professional finish, and all it really is, is lines that are hatched. So I put space them as equally as I can, freehand. Since this whole drawing, that this particular drawing was made freehand, it's best that I do my cross-hatching freehand as well. And the whole concept behind it is that the closer the lines are together, the more of the paper I fill up, the darker the shadow will look. So you, and as the name says, you just keep crossing over and crossing over until you fill as much of the paper in as you need to in order for it to look as dark as you need it to look. So you can go straight, you can go hatched. Now, if you're using a ruler, as we are for your final drawing, you might want to use a ruler to create your cross hatching as well. Now, this also relates to an elevation view. We looked at that as well. So if my box, if I have my three-dimensional box here, and I have a light source, and it's standing in front of my, in front of my box, and it's higher than my box, this is what happens, the same thing. So, I use the same method. I go from this corner through the front corner. This all is getting a lot of light, so I know there's no shadow there. I need to get this hidden part in. So now you know why we've been drawing all these hidden lines. You need them if you're going to make a shadow. So I find the next projection line for the shadow. It's right here. 
So I do exactly what I've done here. I drew this using a vanishing point. So let me find that vanishing point. Okay, where those two meet, those receding lines meet, that's my vanishing point. And now I can choose a length for my shadow or I can use this. I can use my light source itself and go from here through this corner and see exactly how long the shadow is. That was a pretty good guess. So that's how long my shadow is. Going through that front corner gives me the depth, the length for my shadow. Now I use my vanishing point. And where this crosses the next projection, I know to go the other way. And I know which way to go because that's which way my box goes. Now if I do my projection through here, and my projection through here. This lines up. So this is something else we looked at in class. This is our the top of our box. And in terms of our shadow, it's also right here. It's inside our drawing. So the top of our box is represented here. as part of the shadow. It's in part of the shadow. But you would never color it that way. We color it from where the shadow began and fill it up to the point, to the degree where the shadow ended. And if you think about it, if this is our floor plan, a floor plan being a cut, you cut the room at five feet and you hover directly over everything. So all we can see is the tops of things. So if we're looking right directly down at the top of the box, and this is what our shadow looks like, given a light source that hits the floor here, we're doing the same thing. We have a shadow to the right of the box and a bit of shadow behind the box, just as we have it here. So what that means for your assignment is that we've done the first step. We've gone in and made this first line. We don't have the light source above, but we don't really need it. We can just estimate how far we want to go. So if I want my shadow to be that long, then I use my vanishing point to draw the other part. Remember that I'm trying to draw it exactly the way I drew this line. So and this line. So if it's going this way, I know I need to use this. And now I have one more projection to do. I'm going to project this corner. And where it meets the next line, I know to go straight across. The reason I'm going straight across is because this is the way the box is. It's going straight across. So if I follow the next projection, it pretty much lines up with this. So I've got the next projection, and that's where my shadow is. And it makes sense because the light is all around here. And the shadow starts here because the box has interrupted the light. Now, with our cross hatching, you just begin. If you want to use your ruler, you can use your ruler or your set square. And remember that cast shadows represent the absence of light. The object has completely blocked the light now, so we have to make this very dark. And these shouldn't be getting narrower as they go back. I've got this taped down so that I don't escape my viewing area from my video. But if you have the ability to do it, pick it up and um, move it around, turn it from side to side, upside down, whatever you have to do to get some nice, better looking lines than this. And as you keep hatching one way and the other, you begin to fill up the whole space. This side of the box is also in shadow, so we can begin to cross hatch here as well. And go back this way. And again, you're going to take your time and make it very neat. 
and you can use your set square and you go every which way you can think of to get this dark enough and put your lines closer and closer together to get it dark enough. Now the darkest part is right up here and that's because the light from the surface is bouncing up into the object but up here it's far enough away from the surface that it's sitting on for it to not get as much reflected light so the light is being reflected from the surface which is all lit up so you're going to do a much better job of doing your cross hatching but that'll get us so far now the front is getting some light but it's not getting as much light as the top of the box so we can throw in a little bit of hatching this is just plain hatching now my inside lines are too dark but I drew them so that you could I could discuss with you how to make the shadow but yours is going to be in pencil so there is a little bit of a difference between what you're seeing here and what you're actually going to hand in. So follow your evaluation sheet and all of those other good things to get the, the real idea about what you're doing. But let's make this a little darker here and a very dark right here, very, very dark. So this does take some time, so leave yourself enough time to complete this takes some patience and time. And then you'd outline it in black, leave the inside lines in pencil, not like I have them. See, for example, you wouldn't see that line, it would be in pencil, but the rest you would strengthen. You would make them darker so that you have that silhouette that we're always looking for, that darker silhouette. 